In this week's episode, I continue our look at the 2016 Oklahoma State Questions. This is part two of two. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. On the ballot this November 8th will be seven state questions for you to consider. Now this is a continuation of last episode where I went over what state questions are and state questions numbered 776, 777, and 779. In this episode, I'll go over state questions 780, 781, 790, and 792. First, I'm going to read the text as it will appear on the ballot. Then, if needed, I'll attempt to give an English translation of what I just read. Some of the information I'll be sharing with you comes from a few different sources. I'll have a link to each source in the show notes. The two primary sources are the Oklahoma State Elections Board at ok.gov elections and the 2016 Oklahoma Voter Guide at okvoterguide.com. The 2016 Oklahoma Voter Guide was compiled by a nonpartisan coalition of Oklahoma news media and nonprofit organizations. I highly recommend you check it out before November 8th. In the second half of this episode, I'll share with you my personal opinion on each state question and how I will be voting. So, let's get started. Ballot title for state question number 780. This measure amends existing Oklahoma laws and would change the classification of certain drug possession and property crimes from felony to misdemeanor. It would make the possession of a limited quantity of drugs a misdemeanor. The amendment also changes the classification of certain drug possession crimes, which are currently considered felonies and cases where the defendant has a prior drug possession conviction. The proposed amendment would reclassify these drug possession cases as misdemeanors. The amendment would increase the threshold dollar amount used for determining whether certain property crimes are considered a felony or a misdemeanor. Currently, the threshold is $500. The amendment would increase the amount to $1,000. Property crimes covered by this charge include false declaration of a pawn ticket, embezzlement, larceny, grand larceny, theft, receiving or concealing stolen property, taking domesticated fish or game, fraud, forgery, counterfeiting, or issuing bogus checks. This measure would become effective July 1st, 2017. Okay, uh, 780 was actually straightforward. It reduces some drug and property crimes from felonies to misdemeanors. This was all done in a hope to lower the amount of people going to prison. We'll see. Ballot title for state question number 781. This measure creates the County Community Safety Investment Fund only if voters approve state question 780, the Oklahoma Smart Justice Reform Act. This measure would create a fund consisting of any calculated savings or averted costs that are accrued to the state from the implementation of the Oklahoma Smart Justice Reform Act in reclassifying certain property crimes and drug possessions as misdemeanors. The measure requires the Office of Management and Enterprise Services to use either actual data or its best estimate to determine how much money was saved on a yearly basis. The amount determined to be saved must be deposited into the fund and distributed to the counties in proportion to their population to provide community rehabilitative programs such as mental health and substance abuse services. This measure will not become effective if State Question 780, the Oklahoma Smart Justice Reform Act, is not approved by the people. This measure will become effective on July 1st, immediately following its passage. Okay, now this one will go into effect if 780 passes. And it's going to set up a fund, and that fund will be funded 
from the savings generated by not sending people to jail for felonies. And that money from this fund will be given to the counties to help them set up more community drug rehab programs. Ballot title for state question number 790. This measure would remove Article 2, Section 5 of the Oklahoma Constitution, which prohibits the government from using public money or property for the direct or indirect benefit of any religion or religious institution. Article 2, Section 5 has been interpreted by the Oklahoma courts as requiring the removal of a Ten Commandments monument from the grounds of the state capitol. If this measure, repealing Article 2, Section 5, is passed, the government would still be required to comply with the Establishment Clause of the United States Constitution, which is a similar constitutional provision that prevents the government from endorsing a religion or becoming overly involved with religion. All right, to put this one bluntly, this one wants to remove your state constitutional rights from the state sponsoring of religion, all because some state legislatures uh, were upset they couldn't have a religious monument on state grounds. That's why this question's on the ballot. Ballot title for state question number 792. This measure repeals Article 28 of the Oklahoma Constitution and restructures the laws governing alcoholic beverages through a new Article 28A and other laws the legislature will create if the measure passes. The new Article 28A provides that with exceptions, a person or company can have ownership interest in only one area of the alcoholic beverage business manufacturing, wholesaling, or retailing. Some restrictions apply to the sales of manufacturers, brewers, winemakers, and wholesalers. Subject to limitations, the legislature may authorize direct shipments to consumers of wine. Retail locations like grocery stores may sell wine and beer. Liquor stores may sell products other than alcoholic beverages in limited amounts. The legislature must create licenses for retail locations, liquor stores, and places serving alcoholic beverages, and may create other licenses. Certain licensees must meet residency requirements. Felons cannot be licensees. The legislature must designate days and hours when alcoholic beverages may be sold and may impose taxes on sales. Municipalities may levy an occupation tax. If authorized, a state lodge may sell individual alcoholic beverages for on-premise consumption, but no other state involvement in the alcoholic beverage business is allowed. With one exception, the measure will take effect October 1st, 2018. Okay, now this one was a long read. <laughs> um, 792 wants to change Oklahoma's alcohol laws to allow, among other things, uh, to allow retail stores to sell wine and higher strength beer and allow liquor stores to sell other things besides liquor. Kind of like, you know, uh, cups and blenders and things. Um, if this passes, um, the changes will not come to, into effect for two more years. So there's that to consider. Well, that does it. That's all the state questions that will be on the ballot this November 8th. This was a somewhat difficult couple of podcasts to put together for you, mostly because of the many, many takes it took to read these state questions aloud. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do these episodes, to give you an opportunity to hear the state questions. So I hope this helps you out in your understanding of what you'll be voting on in just a few more weeks from now. If you want to know more about these state questions, please check out the 2016 Oklahoma Voter Guide at okvoterguide.com. They have a great write-up about each and every question, including why you should vote yes and no. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is to write your thoughts on this year's state questions. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for WebRing membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the web ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. All right.
right, welcome to the second half of the episode. And as promised, this is my thoughts and how I'm going to be voting on each of the seven questions that will be on the November 8th ballot. Now, again, this is my opinion and my opinion alone. Um, if you want to make up your own mind and you don't want to hear my opinion, hey, I am not offended. Please feel free to turn the podcast off now. But I hope you come back next week. I'll have an all new episode that will have nothing to do with politics. I promise. <laughs> And uh, for those of you sticking around, this is my uh, my thoughts and how I'm going to be voting on the uh, state questions. On state question 776, the death penalty, I am voting no. I do not want to give the state legislature permission to find new execution methods. I just find that wrong on so many levels. I was actually getting upset having to read that state question over and over and over again. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of offended that's even on the ballot. It doesn't need to be there. And it's just a lawsuit waiting to happen, too. So vote no on 776. See, I'm already worked up about it, and I was just doing one sentence. <laughs> All right, state question 777, the ag one. Um, I am voting no on that. I, even though I might disagree with what some of the state legislature does, I still want them to have the right to do some laws and regulations regarding the ag industry. Um, a good example would be the puppy mill. We needed those laws because they were abusing, uh, they were abusing these poor little pups. And uh, on uh, pollution, uh, how many of you remember the uh, new regulations we had to have just to keep the rivers clean from the chicken farms? I mean, uh, that's the kind of stuff that big ag wants the state legislatures to stay out of. So remember that. This is all done by big ag. You know, the people that own the large hog farms in the panhandle or the large chicken farms over there close to Arkansas and Missouri, vote no on the ag bill. 777, vote no. On 779, the uh, sales tax for schools, I am voting yes. I don't mind paying another, another uh, cent on the dollar for a teacher's raise. I mean, they're one of the lowest paid teachers in the nation. Maybe not at the bottom of the list, but we're down on the bottom. So we need to let these teachers have a raise. They're educating our future. They deserve a raise. Come on. And then on uh, 780, uh, 780 is the uh, changing of drug possession and property crimes from uh, mis uh, uh, felony to misdemeanor. I am voting yes. But I'm kind of on the fence on it. I, uh, on one side, I don't want to send a kid to jail for 20 years for having a joint in his pocket. But on the other hand, if a guy is buying meth, I want the book thrown at him. So I am so on the fence on this. But I am going to vote yes because it's still a crime. Um, it's still on the books. So I'm going to say yes on 780. Now, on 781, 781 will only pass if 780 passes, and they want to set up a fund based on the savings of 780. Uh, I don't see that happening reasonably. I mean, that is not going to be a steady source of income for anything, and it's going to force that money into a certain silo for rehab projects, which there are already some rehab projects out there. But we could take that money and put it somewhere else. Hey, law enforcement needs a raise too. So any money we can save by not throwing people in jail, hey, let's give the cops a raise or, or something else with it. Um, so I am reluctantly voting no on 781. Now on 790, the uh, repeal of the uh, religion clause in the Oklahoma State Constitution I'm voting no because I don't want the state to sponsor religion. And that's what they're trying to do. This was a knee-jerk reaction from the religious right of the state government because they can't have their religious monument on state grounds, which I agree with. You can't have religious monuments on state property. The state is not in the religion business, period. Let's keep it that way. Vote no on 790. And finally, 792, the alcohol bill. Um, I am voting yes on this because I do believe competition is good. I think stores should be able to sell wine and beer. Um, you know, like you can go to Walmart or Homeland or United or your local IGA and go buy a bottle of wine 
or a box of wine or whatever they sell nowadays because I don't buy alcohol myself. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> but I'm still, I would like to let you have the opportunity to go to any store and pick up a bottle of wine or, or a nice cold beer. And also this benefits the uh, the liquor stores because they still are going to be selling the hard liquor, the, the Jack Daniels or the Crown and all that. They still, that's where you got to go to go get that. And they let them be able to uh, sell margarita machines and cups and, and stir sticks and things like that. Hey, I think that's a good thing. Now, I could see the the cons on this, too, thinking the, the liquor stores might, uh, you know, might be run out of business because Walmart's now selling wine. But I, I don't think so, because like, like I said, you're still going to be in the spirits business. <laughs> so I am voting yes on 792. Well, that's my opinion, rambling as it was. Uh, so hopefully, remember to uh, make up your own mind. I encourage you to vote your conscience on each and every one of these state questions. So uh, there you have it. See you next week. An important date is getting closer every day, and that is October 14th. That is the last day you could register to vote for the November 8th general election in Oklahoma. For details, please visit ok.gov slash elections. Please, if you haven't done so, go register to vote. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? There you can purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So head on over to cafepress.com slash blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist. There is now well over 13 hours of music for you to enjoy. Wow, this list is getting big. You can listen to the playlist on Spotify and on YouTube. I'll have links to them and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce as of October 9th, 2016, Blog Oklahoma has 909 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get on me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.